Have you ever noticed the odd juxtaposition between what an artist draws and who they seem to be? Countless times I've run into sweet students, often young middle schoolers, who are rule followers, who always try to answer the questions correctly in the class. And when I peek through their sketchbooks, I get things that really contrast with what I thought I would have seen. Maybe they're dark images, demons, devils, skulls. Maybe it's a little bit more tame. But I found that there's often little to no connection between the person as they appear to be, their likes, their dislikes, their desires, and the things that they draw, paint, and represent. Now this happens oddly more with artists than it does with just the random students who would show up in my classes the real creative students, the people that were there because they wanted to be, they needed to be making things. There seemed to be almost no connection between what they explored artistically and the other aspects of their life. But this extends outward in almost every conceivable direction. Artists, we have this interesting tendency to explore things in our art forms that are sometimes out of the normal, culturally appropriate things. So why is this? Why does this happen? Why is it that artists have a tendency to explore things outside of the norm for other people to explore? Why is it that our art often takes us in places we did not anticipate? Why do we follow these rabbit holes, these trails in the deep dark woods and see where they take us? There's something mysterious, isn't there, about following a train of thought and seeing where it goes. I'm reminded of a lyric from a song talking about a young girl who rides her train of thought all the way around. And I like the alliterative, metaphoric component of that, that there is something innate to the artist in following our trains of thought and seeing where they go, going to the end of the tracks. Where do the tracks go? What do they tell us about us and the universe and our place in things? The artist, after all, is not part of the rest of creation. We are something different, something outside. Welcome to the session. My name is Zach, and in this session, I'm working on my favorite personal piece from Inktober. This one was Scratchy, which is a pretty simple prompt, and yet it developed into something that I really enjoyed. We've got our same little sorceress, Andora, and she's facing down a demonic Tanari. This being forged from human dreams and ambitions and pride and nightmares. This thing that is a soul unbound except to incorporeal thoughts and ideas. And thus it is terrifying in the way that it is constructed and it makes little sense to humans. And in the same way it makes all too much sense because it's composed of things we know but slammed together and entangled in a web that is disconcerting. Now not all of them are this way, right? Because not all of humans' dreams and ambitions are negative, if negative be even the word that we want to attribute to this. So there are some that are going to be creepy in their own ways or some that might actually look benevolent and kind, but not this one. This one, is scary and terrifying, and she stares it down while her little infantile kraken hides behind her, holding on for dear life. These kinds of things are a joy for me to draw, and yet it's a little bit odd, and I have to think about, well, what happens if my mother sees these kinds of drawings even now in my mid-30s? There's a little bit of, would I have to explain myself? How would this come across? What would I be able to justify? And yet, this is just part of my nature. I have a need, like so many of us do, to explore things, the world. I'm not fascinated necessarily by things that seem to be evil. I'm fascinated by juxtaposition, by contrast, by things that don't normally intersect with one another, by the hard and the calloused, cold bones intermixing with black, homogenous substances wrapping around it. The idea of dreams given form these things are interesting to me. They're fun to play with. And the juxtaposition, obviously, of the little girl and this monstrous creature. And yet she's not scared. And it looks like it's going to attack her, but is it probably not? It's probably just trying to interact with her. 
I mean, if I really go into it, it's probably desiring some component of her soul, since its soul is slowly expiring due to the confines of its nature and the fact that time erodes them. That's why, of course, they were bound to their realm, and why the elementals were bound to their own, because they sought to devour the elementals in order to feast upon their souls and endure, and instead they were taken and placed outside of time, where aging no longer affected them, and they needed to feast no more. So obviously, stories make this interesting as well. The fact that there's something behind this, that this thing is not necessarily evil, but it is not really misunderstood either. It is understood well, and it is terrifying, and she would be rightful to be terrified by it. And yet, things like this are fun to draw. Fun to draw, yes, because of all of these metaphorical components, but also bones are fun. And the little girl is less stressful to draw and kind of entertaining because she's pretty simplified and cartoony. And I love working with pens, and I love the hatching and the cross-hatching to show how the form is undulating and moving through the body, and I'm going to incorporate a mouth and a tongue and things hanging out of it later, although there's not that many eyes, not nearly enough eyes in this piece. But I have fun with these things. I have fun with this, and it's a sketchbook session, and this is for Inktober, and we have to find the joy. We have to find these things. But people on the outside of the art world will often find it a little strange that the things that we draw, that we paint, that we replicate, seem to be almost cold, almost too in contrast to the rest of our existence. Sometimes they seem a little dark, and perhaps they are. This is a dark image when it comes down to it. This is something that is leaning that direction, more towards the horror genre. Uh, I don't engage with horror stuff at all. I am absolutely terrible at dealing with any manner of suspense or horror. And yet these things are fascinating to me, and maybe that's part of why I partake in it. Because it's scary to me. I don't want to be afraid. I am easily scared in a lot of capacities, and so drawing things that, if they exist, would terrify me, maybe is therapeutic. Maybe this is part of my exploration of what it is to be human. For Zach. For me. And maybe this is why you explore things that are a little bit off color, a little bit strange, perhaps. And sometimes when your parents or your friends look at your work, or your teacher perhaps looks at your work and goes, well, this is concerning, maybe you can start talking about, no, and this isn't concerning. There's nothing here that should necessarily point you in a direction that tells you that something's really wrong with me. This is me exploring the fascinating, lovely aspects of the world around me. And of course, if you are in a situation where you should, there should be some level of concern, then please seek help. The world is dark, and it is necessary sometimes to get help, to get counseling or therapy for things. So do not push against that if that's something that you need and you would benefit from. But... Sometimes your art is just an exploration of the world, and sometimes it's an exploration of the beauty, and sometimes it's an exploration of the ugly. And both are relevant, both are important. The world, after all, is composed of both elements and many, many, many more, and it would be a travesty to fail to explore all of the beautiful and ugly things that cascade through reality around us. This drawing would be far less interesting if both elements were the same, if both were these cartoony, cute things, and they would also be less interesting if both were these grotesque forms. Yet, this juxtaposition, this contrast, makes it far more interesting. So explore the things that you need to explore. I would encourage you to do that. Sometimes delving into the reality around you will look a little bit dark, and if it takes you to a place where it's uncomfortable, where it's pretense not healthy to stay there for too long, then pull yourself back out. Get some friends to help pull you out. But don't be afraid to draw some bones, and don't be afraid to draw some skulls. After all, we all have skulls and bones and things within us, hopefully. I mean, if you don't, then this is, uh, I don't know how you're listening to this. That'd be very perplexing. Let me know in the comments below. If you have no skull, if you have no bones, then, well, I'm intrigued. In the same way that I'm intrigued by skulls, we raised sheep for a long time, and from time to time we would either lose one to a predator or illness, and I would often keep their skulls, the skulls that have these bizarre horns. In some cases, some of our sheep had four horns, 
And these skulls just bear so little resemblance to the actual creature. They're so intriguing, though. I used to do this with my students as well. Uh, not in that exact case, but what I would do is I had a project where I would give them a skeleton. Not a physical one, a picture of a skeleton. And I wouldn't tell them what animal it was from. I would often try to find animals that have skeletons that are really difficult to decipher. And then I would give it to them and I go, your goal is not to figure out what animal this came from. Your goal is to illustrate what the animal that had a skeleton like this might look like. And the results, assuming the students followed the instructions correctly, were often fantastic and very intriguing. Because there are so many strange animals that grace our planet, and most people haven't run into a large percentage of them. If you give someone the skull of a hippo, for example, and don't tell them that's what it is, they might figure it out, but it is a bizarre skull. Now, if you look at the skeletons of many marine mammals, they are very weird. The skull of a sperm whale, for example, looks nothing like what the actual animal does. And yet, when we look at the skeletons of dinosaurs, we get these sleek, lizard-like illustrations. And yet, when you look at a hippo skeleton and then the finished body, when you look at a polar bear skeleton and the finished body, there's a lot of flesh and a lot of fur. And if dinosaurs had feathers and dinosaurs were also bulky in the same way that we see with so many other skeletal structures, maybe some of these dinosaurs were quite chunky. Maybe they were quite different than we've grown up thinking they were. And that's fascinating to me. And it's not dark at all. Yes, this drawing has some dark, macabre aspects to it, but skeletons by their nature do not. They are, I think, a little bit odd for humans to wrap their heads around, but that's because they are a sign of our mortality. And humans often don't like to contemplate the fact that we are mortal, that we will not exist on this plane of existence forever, that things will inevitably change. And this is sad, perhaps, but it's also just a part of reality. And I feel like artists in general are adept at looking at reality. Part of the reason that we are strange, that we write songs about things, books about things, that we use art to explore things that are different than what other people do is we tend not to shy away from reality. That reality is sometimes terribly, terribly depressing. And sometimes it is elating in beautiful, magnificent ways. Life, after all, is quite complicated. We are complicated creatures. And yet we are also so simple. It's really this wonderful, beautiful thing. The more you understand about humans, the more you realize how complicated they are. And at the same time, the more you realize they are all exactly the same. And this seems to be the case as I get older. The more I analyze myself, other people, look at the world around me, the more I realize I know so little about things. I find similarities in more things and learn less of what I know and more of what I don't. And the world becomes smaller and larger simultaneously. It's really odd. And I'm not meaning to speak in weird metaphors here. It's just really, it's odd as you get older and you realize that humans are and kind of always have been the same thing. That our desires and our needs are essentially the same, regardless of where we are. And yet there's these infinite complexities between all of us that separate us and make us rich and different and interesting. And we as artists seem to explore the fringes of all of that. And I think that's why I'm drawn to it. I think that's why many of us are drawn to these oddities and to these things. So explore, dear artist. And if that exploration leads you to draw skeletons and skulls and creepy things fighting cute little girls, explore and share with us what those explorations are and where they take you. As always, thank you for listening. I do greatly appreciate it. Have a good one, y'all. See you soon. <laughs>